John Adams decides to venture to a press conference, which is incredibly rare for him. And John Adams goes to a press conference. He sometimes even goes to games. Here he is asking. <laughs> he's asking Kim Caldwell uh, her can, uh, with her offense, can she win at Tennessee? And there's a little bit of sass here, and I want to see if Jimmy likes the sass. All right, uh, Caleb, let's go ahead with Kim. Caleb, Kim, Caleb, Caleb, Kim. Go ahead and play it. Uh, Kim, do you think your style of play can translate to the higher level, or do you think you'll need to modify it a little bit? I wouldn't be here if I didn't think we could do it here. Yeah, just uh, Jimmy, what'd you think of that? Just kind of all together dead pander. I don't know why I've lost Jimmy. There's Jimmy. What'd you think of uh, our good buddy John Adams getting slapped down by the ladies a little bit? <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't add it. Aren't you the guy that doesn't go to games? <laughs> <laughs> where's your, where's your credit? Yeah, aren't you? Yeah, uh, yeah that, that was. Uh, I like that answer. In fact, I. I I read where John Adams wrote that he liked the answer too, <laughs> but I, I think he likes uh, sassiness. I think he likes a little bit of satire, and so yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I got a kick out of that answer. I, I like that. Yeah, good for her. I do. I liked it as well. <laughs> I oh, I did too. But I want to be clear on something because people are like, "Oh, she smacked John Adams down." That was a perfectly legitimate question. We were asking that on the show yesterday, and yeah, so it, for those who think that, like, this is – how many times has John Adams said something or written something that upset the fan base, and then about five months later they come back like, oh, yeah, he was totally right about that. <laughs> so, well, Jimmy, I mean, Jimmy taught me this. The goal is to get a good response. It's not to look cool. So he yeah. got a great he got a great response, and who cares – most people probably didn't even know it was John, but we did, and that's what made it funny. Um, I, I, I will also say this about her response. You better have a little bit of confidence, borderline cockiness, to come in to this position because Caleb's made reference to this. There are a lot of people in the women's fan base that I don't think want her to succeed. I think they wanted somebody with a Pat Summit tie to succeed. I wonder how you see the future of this fan base shaking out without someone with a Pat Summit tie. Uh, let me say this about that. I have heard more people t that I've talked to that have said, we don't need somebody with a Pat Summit tie. Hired yeah. two of them, didn't work out. So are you going to have some in the other corner? You are. But I think the majority of them are ready to move on from that. I think the majority looked and said, hey, it didn't work out with uh, Holly Warlick, didn't work out with Kelly Harper. Uh, I'm fine with getting uh, some newness into the program, somebody that doesn't have time. Now, if there was a really obvious candidate out there, I mean, if Kim Mulkey had played at, at Tennessee, yeah, okay. John, but, John Gruden. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, a GA. Uh, <laughs> but I – I think that um, I think they're enough that are ready to move on. I don't think they're going to lose the fan base. Next thing, too, if she goes out there right off the bat and they press and they score 100 points and they are impressive and they win and you can see some players getting better, I don't think the fans will give a, a, a rat about that. I, I don't think they'll care. I think she'll win them over with the way her team plays and their performance and, of course, if they win. Caleb, did you and Jimmy know that John Gruden was a GA at Tennessee, met his wife at Tennessee, and owns land in Sevierville? I just thought I'd pass that along, supporting the groomers. It's just in. Breaking news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we haven't heard that enough over the last few years. Um, <laughs> I, he's I, actually, I what, and he's, I'll say this, too. I took more flack over saying that John Gruden was not going to be hired at Tennessee than anything I've ever reported at Tennessee. But really? Back to Caleb's point, I was right, and I knew that you I were. was. But, man, I took so much grief from those people. And you know what? Surprisingly, they never apologized. I was yeah. ready for Jimmy to say surprisingly some of it was from Caleb. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's – you're right, Jimmy. It's it, – it's, you know, it's you, John Adams. Wes Rucker took a ton of grief. Remember when Wes Rucker was insisting that Bruce Pearl was not going to get rehired back at Tennessee? And everybody was like, no, Tennessee's going to hire Bruce Pearl back and they're going to fire Quadzo Martin because that's what they do. And then, of course, yeah. it's like, no, they can't hire Bruce Pearl back. That's not going to happen. So, yeah, it's no one's going to 
Yeah, you're right. It's And by the way, I always love Jimmy because he stood in solidarity with John Dave when you weren't on the show one day. Jimmy actually told me that apparently John was the one that had the question for Butch Jones about the shy Tuttle uh, falling on a helmet, right? Oh, and, that, and that was the – so – I asked that question. Oh, okay. no, 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 no. You, you asked the question. You asked it, You asked the question, but they tried to avoid John because they knew he was going to ask the question, right? That, that's correct. I was sitting next to John, and they, they called on me, and I knew they weren't calling on John, so I handed the mic to John. And the SID at the time said, no, 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 we didn't call on him. We called on you. I said, okay. So I took the mic back from John and asked the question about the uh, incident with Shy Tuttle uh, getting uh, punched by a teammate. Yeah. That's interesting you bring that up, Jimmy, earlier about the majority of fans have said, hey, you don't need to have a Pat Summit tie because it feels like Tennessee did everything they could with the exception of reach out to Carol Lawson to exasperate I mean, the good, you're going to say there is nobody else out there. Uh, eventually, the program is going to have to go in a totally different direction. I'll, I'm going to ask you an impossible question. But if Pat Summit was still with us and God, I wish she was, um, but she was just an incredible presence. What do you think she would make of this hire? Because there are some similarities in youth. Uh, there are some similarities in being a real X's and O's type between maybe what Pat was back in the day when she started and, and, and what Kim is now. I think she would endorse it. I think she would look and say, Tennessee needs to do what's best for Tennessee. They need to do what's best for the Lady Vols. And I don't think she would have a problem with Tennessee going out and hiring somebody that doesn't have ties to her. Because as we mentioned, the previous two didn't pan out. So I think she would be fine with it. Uh, it's an interesting point too, because when Pat was hired, I think she was 22 years old, uh -huh. uh, and which is looking back and you're thinking that's ridiculous. And Caldwell's considered young and she's what, about what, 35? Yeah, 34, 35. Yeah. So uh, in, that, in that neighborhood. And by the way, let me correct this. A lot of people have said this is the fourth women's basketball coach in Lady Vols history. That's not even close to being true. Pat Summit was not the first coach for the Lady Vols. If you want to say in the NCAA era, then that would be accurate. Joan Cronin coached the Lady Vols in basketball. There were plenty of other Lady Vols coaches. Anyway, uh, I got off on that tangent because I keep reading this is only the fourth women's coach in Tennessee history, which isn't true. Uh, but I think Pat would endorse it. I think she'd sign off on it. I think she'd be excited about a young person coming in, bringing energy. Uh, now, and then there's this question, can she recruit at this level? Well, I think she can. I think her personality and her energy and – Selling the brand of the Lady Vols will enable her to recruit at a high level. I just don't know how quickly she can do it. Jimmy, it's interesting you say that about, you're right, Joan Cronin did coach the Lady Vols. And I do you think for the Pat Summit loyalist um, that were like, oh, you not, 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 this isn't about her because I agree she would endorse it. But the ones that are like, oh, you have to keep things in her mold because her way won so much. Do you think there's a fundamental misunderstanding of what built the women's basketball program because yes pat summit was an amazing coach and she evolved with the game there's also the benefit that tennessee was one of like four states that had women's high school basketball dating back to the 40s so they had a recruiting base as this sport started to blow up before any other state did and they fully embraced title nine before any other school in the sec did all of these were factors that helped build tennessee up beyond just pat summit coaching there because let's be honest if pat summit were coaching it if, if Gina Oriema were coaching at some schools in the 70s, they might have flamed out because some schools, as you know, didn't really give anything to the women's basketball programs during that time. Well, you're right. And also Tennessee is one of the few programs that at that time had a women's athletic director. Very few programs did. They had a women's senior administrator, not a women's athletic director. And the other part of what you said about evolving, and it's like, well, the Pat Summit way. What was the Pat Summit way? The first national championship she won – was with, and I didn't coin this phrase, corn-fed chicks. There were a bunch of uh, tall white girls inside that would rebound every miss and score, and they were a slow team. They evolved in 1998 when they went undefeated and won it all. They were a fast break, press, quick, athletic team. She changed with the times. She was able to do that, and that was one of the things that impressed me. So did Nick Saban, by the way, in football. But Pat Summit changed with the times. So – it's kind of hard to pin, pigeonhole exactly what her style was. Now, her style was defense and rebounding. I get that. 
but she changed from a slow plotting to an athletic, to a fast pace, and then somewhere in between. So she mixed things up during her career to try to stay a step ahead, which is one of the things that great coaches do, and she did that. <laughs>